Yo, yo, Andy, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. I am. Good. I think it's the good. first time I ever entered the uh, uh, opened up an episode with like an MTV Raps kind of That's vibe. Right. Got it. You know, kind of, yo, yo, MTV Raps. I was flipping through through, through uh, I don't know if it was Hulu. I don't think MTV is on Hulu. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe it was on my Paramount. TV. Paramount, yeah. Yeah. And I was flipping through something. I was like, MTV. And I'm like, what do they have on MTV? Like, I, they're going to have some cool videos out. It's not even, it's not like nothing like it used to be. So, no, I don't know I where doubt it that. is. Yeah. I don't either. There's something like ex- I watch that's uh, MTV programming, though. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think of what it is. I had this, like, this fascinating, this, uh, like, it was going to be MTV Cribs. That was what, like, when I saw MTV, I'm like, oh, sweet, I'm going to go to that channel. Because there's going to be, like, some sick-ass Cribs or something on there. And I was like, no, that show's been over, like, that show's been over for, like, 20 years. You, you know what the MTV Cribs is now? It's, like, the uh, House Hunters, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's our yeah. MTV Cribs. Million dollar that's list. That turned into. <laughs> million dollar, yeah, million dollar yeah. list. Is. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today's bonus episode, we are going to talk about what we are going to change or do this year. Like, yeah. not negatively, like, what are you going to start doing this year that you haven't been doing? Yeah, I, you know, I thought about that. You posed that question and I kind of milled it around in my head a little bit and thought, wow, what, what kind of things could I, what should I change? You know, because yeah. I haven't really openly thought about it, you know, like, a, a conscious effort like these are this is a goal that i'm going to try and do and when you pose the question to me in the text here a couple hours ago i started thinking about it and so i appreciate you doing that and one of the things that i feel like i could uh, see the realization from is if i streamlined my bidding process um uh, and i've been doing it a bunch lately it's gotten better but i yeah. need to do more you know, to start like, chunking like down putting some stuff things. together in a price book in your within your software. That kind yeah, of thing. yeah, kind of, like kind of something along those lines. Yep, and just continuing that. Um, I find, and I don't know if I came to a realization here this morning, um, working in the office, that I'm a uh, oh, what do they call that? Um, like afraid of commitment. What do you call it? What do you call that? <laughs> You're afraid you know, to commit. Yeah, afraid know. to commit. Is yeah, that- right. And, yeah. and I feel like sometimes I'll go look at a job and I'll be like, oh, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. And, you know, you'll think through a couple of things and I'll think through this and I'll be like, oh, I got to figure out how to do that. And I got to figure out how to do this. And now I, next thing I know, I've spent like a week, you know, kind of in the back of my mind thinking about it, but never really devoting any time to it. And then I sit down and I do the bid in like 32 minutes. It's done. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. why, why did I not just do that on Monday? Instead of on Sunday, because now the bid's been sitting in my inbox or my to-do list for a week, you know. I well, you're just... not talking about procrastinating. That's not what you're doing. It's, it's not really or procrastinating because I'm thinking about it. I just haven't decided that we're just going to do this. This is It's yeah. going to take this much time, and here's the number, and we're going to stick with it. Um, well, know. I think we all do that a little bit. I know I do it, and I've over the years, I've realized – so quickly each time that I'm like, no, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do anything else until this is done. I finish it. And I'm like, why didn't I do that before? It was so easy. <laughs> right. right. So that's, that's where I say it's, it's almost like a commitment thing. Like I'm afraid to commit to this concept of, um, this is, but this is what the price is what it's going to take. Just, just do yeah. it. Commit. Boom. It's done. Um, we had one that was in and, and, and rightfully so I, I hesitated on it. It's a, uh, 600,000 BTU copper coil boiler uh, connected to a 500 gallon storage tank in a 130 unit retirement facility. Right. So the copper coil boilers got a leak in it. Yeah. It's going to be a nice job. And I think I've got them convinced that we're going to go tankless. We're going to put eight Navians on the wall or eight Navians with a lot of, yeah, yeah, with a lot of tankless. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to hook into their existing 500 gallon storage tank and it's going to be awesome. Um, but in my mind, I had to really like work through all of that. And those are the ones that really get me drugged down because if I sat down for six or seven hours, like it really takes to do a design like that, um, then I wouldn't have been in such a, I wouldn't have, I tried doing it while we were in Germany 
right? Oh, well, there's, so it was, yeah. it was an hour here and it was 20 minutes here and 15 minutes here and an hour here. And I was working with a guy from Navian, um, on the sizing. So I got all, got all the sizing done, but, uh, it, you know, it just, it just, he and I were having this back and forth email conversation about, you know, some different aspects of it, you know, common venting and, and making sure you put a circuit setter on the, each uh, unit, which the circuit setter thing is something that's new to me. Um, I, yeah, well, I didn't know you had to do that. Actually. Well, well, so flow control on each unit. Yeah. It's something to, to make sure that you don't exceed four gallons a minute. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I've never seen that before. And the drawing he's shipped shows it. But I mean, we've got a, on eight units, we've got a pump that's going to move 32 gallons a minute at uh, 26 feet ahead, which I was like, okay, I mean, that makes sense. It's, I mean, we got to move eight gallons or four gallons per unit. And if you have two units that are off, then why wouldn't that eight gallons a minute go through one single unit? And sure. so you put a flow restrictor on there, a uh, uh, circuit setter, balancing valve, if you will, on right. each of the units so that you can set them to four. But, you know, and then I squirreled away on, you know, who's, who's uh balancing valve is appropriate, you know, for each one. And then it dawned on me that most balancing valves that are on the market are not lead free because they're used for no, hydronics. Yeah. Cause they're made for hydronics. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I bet you Clefie's those, got one, no? Clefie does. Yeah. The 132 is uh, actually, they make a lead free version of that in three quarters. So there you go. There it is. Yeah. So streamlining the bidding process, just building up your price book, I suppose would be like the immediate way to do that. Yeah. Like for the more regular stuff you're doing, but Yep. When you're talking about like a big project like that, the first thing that came into my head, but then you said you were working with Navian, but like they have those commercial services for that sizing and stuff yeah. like that, like engineers that you work with. And the first thing, like I wouldn't even attempt it. I would just be like, here's what I got. Here's what I need. You know what I mean? Like I know I could handle jobs where all I needed was like two, maybe three units. Yep. You know what I yeah, mean? Like totally. But, yeah. But you get into that four, five, six units at a time to hit a load of like a car wash or something like that. Immediately, I'm like, I'm not, I know this will work, but I can't, I want somebody else to say it's going to work. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you and put, then you what I do is I spend this. way too much time yeah. trying to come up with that, you know, the solution there. I don't like know. Ghosts That's just my, what's that? You do got ghosts I, over there. Your lights just I turn do. off. I do. <laughs> I think I just like yeah. lost power. Totally. No. I don't know. That's cool. Whatever. Yeah. Well, that's we, your, yeah, so you're, that, yeah, you're going to do that. I don't really, I don't know if I have an answer for it. You know, to be honest with you, I think what I need to do within my bookkeeping altogether is my, my price book is kind of, when I switched over to house call, um, I did not switch over my QuickBooks on purpose. Right. Uh, because it was such a mess. And I wasn't you to, I had so, I had hundreds of items in there. It was like half by two brass nipple. I'm like, no, because that's not how I price things. I don't price things time and material. I just never do. I, I might be able to build up a proposal based off of how long I think something's going to take me and kind of approach it from a time and material aspect. Yeah. Uh, so not necessarily like fully flat rate, but I'm getting closer and closer to, pretty much doing everything flat rate anyway. Right. Um, so I need to strengthen my, my price book for sure. There's without, I mean, somebody came in that really knew what they were talking about. Not me, but somebody else, they probably like look at this and be like, dude, this is, you're not even close. And they're, they wouldn't be wrong. Yeah. I've got a lot of work to do. So maybe that's what, you know, my answer to that question is kind of the same as yours. Although I'll just come right out and say it like I've got some work to do. I really do. Yeah. I do a lot totally. of the same stuff over and over though. I do a lot of water heaters. I do a lot <laughs> right. of boiler services, a lot of boiler and heating repairs, you know, like where I can pretty much tell you a pretty, a pretty thin uh, stack of price book line items. Yeah. I can get through a lot of weeks without having to add another item. You know what I mean? Yep. And that's, I mean, that's something that I want to continue building on too. Is so like I have a, a template that I use for, for tankless. Yeah. If, if we're going to do go to a, a gas tank swap out or something like that. And that doing that is what I want to do more of 
Um, I want to streamline more of those processes of, you know, oh, hey, we're going to go do this job. You know, we're going to do a bathtub change out. You know, why do I not have a bathtub change out line item? You know, right. like this, here's, here's a, here's a price book item. It's change out this bathtub into a shower. And then some of it, you know, you kind of almost get to where you're like, well, there's so many options. Yeah. Right? I think you, you know, overthink that though. I think you, you do, you build it up all, to be way more than it is. Yep. You do. And that's, and that's where I get hung up because I'm looking at it going, well, what if I only use a $30 trim instead of the $200 trim? Right. Yeah, well, you know what? It's okay. So it's 170 bucks. So now I'm 2250 instead of 2110. <laughs> I know. Really? That's where you get into that time <laughs> and material stuff and it kills you because yeah. you don't make any more money, you know, because it takes so much longer to put the bid together stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where if you get closer to that, well, this is, I know it's going to take me this long and I know it's yeah. going to be, you know, like the, I could just, yeah. I, I'm getting closer and closer. I'm not there yet. Fully admit I'm not to the flat rate thing yet, but I, a lot of my pricing is, is made up that way. Right. Like people call and ask it, how much is a tankless? Well, I can tell you it's at least this much. And that number I'm yep. giving them is the flat rate price for probably, you know, like nine out of 10 jobs. Yeah. There's a couple variables. There always, there are, there are, but I'm not talking about like, like you're just bringing up, like you kind of over, start overthinking like, well, you got the hundred dollar trim or you got the eighty dollar trim or you got you know, no. Right. You start doing that and it starts taking way too long. You're not making any more or any less like it's not benefiting. Oh no. At all. You know. No, not at all. Not at all. Because at the end of the day, you know how long it's gonna take you to do the job, and you know what it's gonna cost. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Water heaters, same way. Like we've talked about <laughs> how many times have we talk about we don't go look at water heaters, you know what I mean? Because like, why would you? It's right. the same kind of mentality. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm right there with you, buddy. I need to, I need to improve my price book because doing that will make my processes easier too. You're right. bidding a lot more jobs than I am in a year, but it doesn't mean like it should take me more time just because no. I have less to do. You know what Especially I mean? Especially because we have the ability to make it, to, we have the ability to streamline that process. Absolutely. You know? And I've, I've found, and, and I don't know, this not a, not a plug for HCP on this at all, but one of the things that I have started doing is when I'm doing a bid, and I'm working something up. I go in and I and I I use the proposal tool every chance that I can, and, and you save it as a and I template. go in and save it as a template and I name it something. You know, here's here's a four unit uh, or four Navian tank rack system. Yep. Here's a a bathtub and a toilet and a la, you know a, a typical yeah because you, then you don't lose out. what yeah you don't lose that time you put into it right. so you can grab it another time and reuse it kind of deal. Yep, you can plug it in and then change a few things and it's ready to go. So. Anyway, well, having that stuff, those, those, I use the proposal tool all the time as well. And so I grab that template where it's like tankless, boom. Yeah. And what, what makes that so valuable to me is when I leave a repair job and people are like, you know, our water heater, how much is it going to be? And I'll, t I'll tell them like, look, just check your email in the next 30 minutes. You'll have it there. I'll, I'll send you a yeah. proposal. And I get in my van, I drive around the corner. So I'm not parked in their driveway. And I literally just send them the, I, I can go from my phone or my, ipad and be like boom here's your proposal yeah and then yep. i give them and then i follow up the next day hey you saw that do you have any questions for me we want to talk about it or do you want to you want to move forward that kind of thing yep no my flat rate uh, guys are probably just pulling their hair out right just now. like you idiot you idiots are so bad at sales <laughs> well yeah, you're, you're probably not wrong you're probably not wrong yeah no I'm, yeah I'm a pretty fair plumber but i'm not not the greatest salesman no we're getting better though that's right. We're getting better together. All right, dude. Sounds good. good. One. Have, yeah, you too.